Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome. Welcome to Gems 5am Club and it's Sunday morning. It's summer and it's a glorious summer's day. Uh, we've had rain all week and uh, overcast conditions but Sunday is uh, rewarding us with the fruits of magnificent weather and I'm here at Bondi Beach you can see Bondi Beach in the background there and there's quite a few people here already. It's about 7.30 in the morning, so it's still pretty early, but the sun is very warm and uh, it's, uh, it's panning out to be an awesome, awesome day. Anyway, I've done my two kilometre swim. I was in uh, Bondi Icebergs before, so I've done my 40 laps, non-stop swimming for one hour which I do virtually every Sunday morning whenever I'm here in Sydney. I'll come and do my 40, uh, 40 lap swim of icebergs. And if I'm not here at icebergs, I'm probably at uh, Bronte uh, doing a similar sort of swim, but in a shorter pool. But I'll do 70 laps to clock up my 2K um, um, intermediate goal. So what do we talk about today? I've already done two gyms, 5am clubs. So this will be the third for the day and I'm cranking along. I just can't believe, I just can't believe where I'm getting the energy from and more importantly, where I'm getting all the material, where I'm getting the motivation to deliver day in, day out, five logs a day, uh, approximately 15 minutes in duration of non-stop uh, chatting and uh, doing, doing it day in, day out. It keeps me up at, late at night and it gets me up early in the morning and it's something that I thoroughly enjoy doing and it's something that I hope you also get something out of because I'm certainly learning a lot and uh, building on, uh, on it day by day. So what I want to talk about today is a book summary entitled Through the Language Glass by an author named Guy Dusha. Guy Dusha is the author of this interesting book and what it does is it talks about language and the importance of language in terms of helping our generation and previous generations uh, perceive the world and make sense of the world. But uh, he uh, kicks off the book with an alarming sort of claim and uh, I tend to agree with him because what I've seen over the, uh, the part, what, I've, what I've seen over my lifetime is the shift in language and the shift in, uh, in the way we communicate uh, one to each other and from nation to nation. But what he said was uh, within two or three generations, so within 75 years, 50 to 75 years is what he's suggesting. It'll probably be, probably be after, after I've gone, but it doesn't matter. It'll impact my children grandchildren and hopefully or, you know, future generations. What he's saying is that within two or three generations, at least half of the world's, of the world's 6,000 or so languages will have disappeared. So what does that mean? First of all, I didn't know that there were 6,000 languages in the world. So that, that is a, a, a big lesson to kick off with. But what he's suggesting is that half of those languages, so 3,000 of those 6,000, will most probably disappear. So uh, the book goes into a little bit more detail in terms of what language means and what it does. And he says that uh, when we look at language, you see that language, that the language we speak, or the language that we use, alters our reality and how nature, culture and language have always been intertwined all throughout history. So there's a, uh, a, a, an, an intertwine, there's a connection between language, nature and culture. They are inextricably intertwined and connected, which impact not only what we see but also what we pass on to our children and to future generations. So 
what the author is saying here and is letting us know is that language, and it's important, language really shapes our perception of the world. It shapes the way we see things, it shapes the way we experience things, and it's, it shapes the way the world is to each and every one of us. But it's also important to understand is that each and every one of us experience a different present. Each and every one of us has experienced a different past and each and every one of us is going to experience a different future. There is no one reality. There are multiple billions of realities happening in parallel. And it's hard enough to uh, understand your own reality, let alone to find a partner or somebody to be able to share a common reality with and to get through your life um, connected and in love till the end of your days. So the first major point that the author brings out of this book is that you can see how close-knit a society is based on the grammatical complexity of its language. The language structure and the complexity of the language and the depth and breadth of the language is a big indicator in terms of how connected a society can be. Because interestingly, the author says, language structure reflects its societal structure. And as a rule, the more complex a society is, um, the simpler its word and grammatical structure becomes. That's interesting, because what you, what you find is, and we see it all the time, that uh, we are becoming more habitual in our language. We, although we live in a multicultural society here in Australia, in order for us all to uh, connect and stay loosely connected, we need to have a shared vocabulary and a shared language. And because there are so many different cultures intersecting at the same time, then it's very, very hard for each of these cultures to have the, have the depth and the breadth of the, of the words and the language to be able to express themselves deeply and more meaningfully. And hence why we have a, a uh, superficial sort of world that we live in. It's the reason why we feel so lonely and that Sydney feels so vacuous. All major cities start to feel vacuous because the complexity of the language, the complexity of our thinking, the complexity of our shared reality is very, very superficial and the veneer is very, very thin indeed. So that's a very, very important point. So the bigger the society becomes, and with the introduction of strangers, people who are outside the culture, so they're considered to be strangers, they're, they're ring-ins, so to speak. So the introduction of strangers in the communication chain means that context is lost, and implicit meaning makes way for explicit meaning. So instead of us implicitly knowing what life and what we're meaning, because you know, with my mother, I remember with my mother and with my father to a certain extent and with close friends, I know that I can com communicate with some people without even saying something. It's just a look or a feeling or a word that you can express that can have a big impact. But what we're saying is that as more and more people come into our social circle, we need to become more explicit in our communication and the whole implicit communication becomes harder to understand and harder to define. So a lot of communication and a lot of meaning is lost in our lives because we struggle to be able to communicate at a deeper level and even if we do try and communicate other people just don't get it and just don't understand what, we, what we're saying and don't understand implicitly the meaning 
of what we're doing through shared experience. So the next major point to come out of this book is that depending on what our language requires us to say, our thinking changes as well. Because as your language, as our language becomes simpler, as we become more habitual and our vocabulary narrows, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, our thinking also becomes shallower as well. Because if you're using less words to communicate and the context or the, uh, the meaning of those words is broader, then it's harder and harder to share your experience with somebody else because the, the um, uh, I guess the accuracy of your communication also is lost. So the rules of language change how we express ideas and how you express ideas change the way you think. So um, if you want to expand your vocabulary and to expand your thinking, the best way to start is by reading books which have lots of different ideas and lots of different words. And the Bible, the Bible is one of those books which has almost a million words. And in terms of different words, there's, I forget the number, I looked it up the other day on Google and I, I saw that there was a, a number of different words used in the Bible that help expand your vocabulary and broaden your experience. But uh, it's important to have a deep and, and broad vocabulary in order to have a more meaningful life is the lesson that we're, that we're learning from this book. So another thing is, which is important is that different languages have different sort of nuances. English is a gender, gender neutral language. And listen to this, this is important. English is a gender neutral language and a, not, a noun requires further explanation um, um, because of that. We've had a couple of surfs down south, have we? So uh, the third point which leads on from this is that people who speak languages with gender nouns perceive the world a lot differently to people who, who speak with gender neutral words. So depending on those genders, so for example, German, and I never knew this before, but German has three gender markers, male, female, and neutral. Spanish has both male and female. So a bridge in German is female, whereas in Spanish, a bridge is male. So <laughs> you can understand in this gender neutral world that um, uh, the cultural Marxists are trying to push us just won't work in certain languages. It may work in English, but it won't work in French. It won't work in, sorry, German, nor Spanish, which are gender based languages. So uh, in terms of what we talk about and how we, how we communicate, they say that most, speak, most people speak about 45,000 words a day. And what you speak and what you say in those 45,000 words is going to shape how you think and how you perceive. So this is why it's important to be careful with the people that you hang out with. This is why it's important to be careful with the words that you choose to describe your experiences. This is why it's important to be positive in your outlook, to live with positive expectancy, and to use positive languages, positive language to express yourself to others because it impacts not only the way you think, but also the way you perceive and express and live your reality. So uh, take note and uh, use some of those learnings from this book to help change your life. And you can improve your life, not only improve your life, but improve the life of your partner, 
your children, your family, your friends, your work peers, by being more selective with how you use your words, by expanding your vocabulary and doing more with what you have available to you. So thank you very much for joining me on Gems 5am Club on this wonderful summer's morning. I'm just sitting under the tree here. The sky is blue. The sun is out. And I love you. <laughs> ah, it's getting that time of year. Valentine's Day. Uh, it's probably probably around my probably around my 39th Valentine's. I've been married for 35 years. I've known Paul ever since she's 21. She's turning 60 this year, so we're close to 39 Valentine's days. So I'll try and not disappoint my my darling, my, my beautiful wife. So uh, thank you very much for joining me on Jim's 5am Club and walking through this and talking about this book Through the Language Glass by Guy Dusha. And let's finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, and most importantly, stay positive and understand that the words that you use, the words that you use in your language, the habitual words that you choose, and the breadth and depth of the words that you have in your vocabulary are going to shape your reality and the perception of your life and are going to enable you to express yourself and to live your past, present and future better or worse depending on the words you choose to use. You can recreate your past, you can recreate your present and you can certainly enhance your future by choosing better words to describe everything and to learn how to be more positive and more accurate and more, um, and more welcoming of, of uh, your, uh, your experiences. So thank you, Lakia from Jim's 5am Club, and we'll come again. I look forward to coming to you again tomorrow or later on in the day from a different location with a different message where we live, learn and pass it on and make the most of this Sunday and look forward to uh, kicking off the work week on a positive note. Yasas, ya, and bye for now.